Hello guys and welcome to another Profile Tree video. So in today's video we're going to be covering Web3. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So just starting off, what exactly is Web3? So Web3 is pretty much the next stage in the evolution of the internet. Now that aims to make the web more intelligent, decentralized and of course secure. Now before we move further into Web3 itself, we'll take a look at its predecessors, which were Web uh, 1.0 1 and Web 2.0, so version 1 and 2. Now starting off with Web 1.0, also known as the read-only web, uh, this refers to the early stages of the internet when websites were static and users could only passively consume content. So of course, uh, what people would be using back in the days was uh, uh, radio, of course they would get their information from newspapers and uh, so on. So there's quite a couple of old style ways of course on how they receive their information. But with the internet 1.0, that's when of course the internet was first introduced. So the primary goal of Web 1.0 was to provide users with information and there was pretty much little to no interaction or collaboration with other users. It was basically just a platform where you can just get some information. Of course this is when uh, some some companies may have started uh, going on to it like you have Amazon uh, for the likes of things where you'd be able to order online and re then receive that package but then again, it was very, very early stages with uh, Web 1.0. Uh, I would say that the websites were very, very basic. It lacked the dynamic and interaction features or interactive features that we would see today. So you'll probably just have a very, very plain website. And just to shine some light on what Amazon may have used to look like or what Amazon did used to look like, uh, this is pretty much it from the Web 1.0. Uh, as you can see, it's very, very basic. I mean, they've got their auctions, they've got art and collectibles. I don't even think they do auctions anymore as well. Uh, of course, you have everything you need there. You can see the dynamic with Amazon as well. It lacks the detail, uh, lacks the presentation that we would normally see Amazon uh, for what it is now. Now, I would say that this was pretty much uh, a fairly rare thing to see. It's more the fact uh, that Majority of the sites that we've seen back in the day uh, for Web 1.0, uh, of course, there was like the likes of what we have now, which we have social media, of course, we have a bunch more e commerce platforms. Instead, uh, content was typically presented in a one dimensional format, so uh, everything was pretty limited. The opportunities were limited for um, customization and, of course, personalization. Now with Web 2.0 on the other hand, this was a little bit more of a different story. Uh, it is a read and write web. So this is where users are no longer passive consumers of information, but active participants in creating, sharing and collaborating on content. Now this shift of course has led to the rise of social media. That's when we had the likes of Facebook, we've had the likes of Twitter. So they were the uh, early ones. Uh, that were available back then uh, and of course uh, other user generated content platforms were then available. Uh, Web 2.0 is characterized by interactive and dynamic features such as multimedia content, you have real-time updates, you have interactive applications. The focus has shifted from providing information to creating a collaborative and inter interactive user experience allowing users to connect and engage with one another, another and of course uh, on a more personal level. So that was Web 2.0. So about Web uh, 3.0 or Web 3, what's new? What exactly is new about the new web or new internet that we use today? Well, of course, the World Wide Web is a little bit more advanced in terms of the predecessors 1 and 2 or point 0.1 and then point 0.2. Uh, I would say Web 3.0 is the next stage uh, in the evolution of internet and it 
as I said, it aims to make the web more intelligent, decentralized, and secure. It builds on the foundation laid by 2.0, but with a renewed em emphasis on privacy, of course, uh, the, and decentralization. Some of the key technologies that power Web 3.0 include blockchain, so that's something fairly new. Uh, we've got centralized file systems, decentralized identity solutions, and artificial intelligence. And AI has actually gotten fairly big uh, within the upcoming years and is yet to be improved on as well. And of course, we have the likes of ChatGPT that a lot of people have been using. And of course, uh, for the younger audience that have been using the chat um, or the Snapchat AI, of course, they, they're using it to chat to the AI themselves. Now, as I've mentioned, uh, one of the defining characteristics of Web 3.0, and that would be to do with blockchain. Now, the use of blockchain, uh, blockchain technology uh, to create decentralized applications, so dApps, that are resistant to censorship and controlled by centralized authorities. Now, these dApps use smart contracts to execute code automatically and uh, transparently, which enables a wide range of new business models, such as peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, decentralized finance, so that's DeFi, and non-fungible tokens, and that, that will be NFTs. And I'm sure you guys have heard all about NFTs. Uh, but of course, if you guys want to know more about the blockchain, um, we do have some articles on our profile tree website if you guys want to go check it out. But anyway, moving on to NFTs, which I was saying there. Now, I wouldn't say uh, NFTs itself is pretty much something very new that we've now looked at. Uh, it's pretty much just having a digital asset uh, that represent ownership of unique items. So this could be like art, music, collectibles. They're pretty much created using block uh, blockchain technology, which ensures that they're one of a kind and cannot be duplicated or counterfeited. Now, NFTs have become a popular way for artists and creators to monetize their work in the digital age. And they've also generated significant interest from investors and collectors. Now, uh, just moving on uh, to uh, crypto or cryptocurrency. Now, that's something that is operated within the blockchain technology as well. So a couple of examples there, or a few examples would be Tether, you've got Bitcoin and Ether. Now Tether is a stable coin that's pegged to the value of the US dollar. So that means its value remains relatively stable compared to other cryptocurrencies. So that's just a little background story. So Tether is widely used by traders and it changes the way we move funds quickly and securely uh, between different exchanges and wallets. Of course, uh, the one that you guys may know the most there is Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is the first and most well-known cryptocurrency. It was actually created in 2009 and it operates on a decentralized network that allows for secure peer-to-peer -peer transactions without the need of uh, like the banks, pretty much. You don't really need banks. Um, so Bitcoin has a limited supply of about 21 million uh, coins, which makes the, the asset. So its price has been known to be volatile, so it's it has experienced a significant uh, fluctuation over the years. So Bitcoin, probably back in the day in 2009, would have been very, very cheap compared to what it's now like in 2023, of course. So it's a big, big jump. Now with Ether, uh, Ether is a cryptocurrency that powers the Ethereum network, uh, so which is a blockchain pretty much um, that enables the creation of decentralized applications, again, dApps. So it is used to pay for transaction fees um, on the Ethereum network. Ether has seen significant growth in the value over the past years. So it has plenty of investors and developers betting on Ethereum itself. So that pretty much uh, gives us an idea of what Web 3.0 is. And it is expected to bring significant changes and advancements compared to its predecessors, of course, which is 1.0 and 2.0. Uh, I would say there's a couple of differences, uh, which is the big one, which is decentralization, as I've mentioned. Uh, so that's all, of course, all the blockchain technology. 
and this is where we have our data storage and processing. Basically means that there's no single entity controlling the internet and users will have more control over their data. Then you have personalization as well. Of course, compared to 1.0 and 2.0, uh, users can now pretty much tailor their individual needs. So it's more efficient and targeted advertising. Uh, yeah, targeted advertising and of course marketing. Now, the biggest one there is integration with AI. Uh, Web 3.0 will integrate with artificial intelligence to provide more intelligent and intuitive applications. This will enable applications to learn and adapt to users' behavior, making them more efficient and user-friendly. And of course, lastly there, uh, which we mentioned, which is NFTs, that is the digital asset ownership. And of course, with the Web 3.0, It'll enable ownership and trading of all digital assets, such as cryptocurrencies and fungible tokens, which is NFTs, on a decentralized network. And that allows for more of a secure and transparent transaction. So, what was there to note with what we've viewed up? So, Web 3.0 is pretty much expected to be more decentralized, interconnected, intelligent, and secure, more secure than its predecessors, providing users with more personalized and pretty much just an efficient experience. So guys, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, if you guys have any questions at all regarding the video, please do let us know. And if you're looking for more information as well on maybe blockchain as well, uh, we do have a couple of articles on our website so please do go ahead and check it out and as i said if you guys have any questions at all please do let us know in the comment section below but other than that i'll see you guys for the next video thank you very much for watching